Hi, I'm Bill Werda from the MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas, and I am going to review three abstracts that were presented uh, at ASH 2020, a uh, virtual meeting um, this year uh, for um, updates in treatments for patients with chronic lymphocytic leukemia. I'm the um, section head for the CLL program at the MD Anderson Cancer Center. I'm also um, a medical director for both inpatient and outpatient uh, services at MD Anderson. The two abstracts that I wanted to update and review for you are the Captivate and then two abstracts related to the uh, Transcend CLL study, which is CD19 CAR T cell therapy for patients with CLL. I've combined those two abstracts related to the Transcend study, and then I will also be um, presenting the uh, Captivate, uh, which is the first trial that I want to review. So the, the Captivate trial is a trial for previously untreated patients with CLL who need treatment. Uh, this is a combination of ibrutinib plus venetoclax for treatment naive patients younger than 70 years of age. Um, and it is a trial that uh, it was aimed at looking at activity of this combination um, with the first 12 cycles of combined therapy, and then also to look at and answer the question of whether or not patients needed um, maintenance therapy to maintain their remission. And this trial has been previously presented in terms of those first 12 cycles of combination therapy, but this year at ASH was the first presentation for the requirement or comment on the requirement for maintenance treatment, which was the primary endpoint for this clinical trial. I presented it on behalf of my colleagues um, that participated in the study. It was a large um, international clinical trial uh, for patients, uh, previously untreated patients with CLL. As I mentioned, um, the first portion of the study was to give combined ibrutinib plus venetoclax for a total of 12 cycles of combined therapy. Before they started the combination, uh, all the patients received three cycles of ibrutinib by itself to bring the level of disease down and reduce the risk for tumor lysis upon initiation and ramp up of venetoclax. Again, 12 cycles of uh, the combination. And then uh, on the right side of this slide, you can see that patients were assigned to treatment randomly based on whether or not they achieved an undetectable MRD status. For those patients who were undetectable with regard to minimal residual disease in the bone marrow, um, those patients were randomized to either placebo or no continued treatment versus ibrutinib, um, continu continued ibrutinib single agent. Patients who had measurable residual disease or were not confirmed as undetectable were randomized to receive either ibrutinib by itself or continued combined therapy. And the primary endpoint, as I mentioned, was the outcomes for patients who were between patients who were assigned to placebo versus those who were assigned to ibrutinib uh, single agent. And particularly in regard to the what's called the one-year disease-free survival. So what happens and what per percentage of patients are um, without measurable MRD at one year and don't have progressive disease and are alive. So in this portion of the study, there were 164 patients assigned. This included patients with high-risk features, for example, those patients with 17p deletion or mutated P TP53, patients who had an unmutated immunoglobulin gene or complex karyotype. Again, those are patients who are considered high-risk um, for sh shorter um, remission. Um, and as you can see, there were a fair number of those patients included in the study. The initial three months of ibrutinib by itself was successful in reducing the amount of disease and reducing the risk for tumor lysis with venetoclax initiation. That's illustrated here by the reduction in the dark blue uh, percentage of patients between baseline and after the ibrutinib lead-in. So that high-risk category reduced from 24% to 2%, um, and the percentage of patients who had uh, hospitalization indicated reduced from 
to, to 18%. So reduction in amount of disease, risk for tumor lysis with those three months of lead-in of ibrutinib single agent. And then these are the response rates after the 20, uh, 12 cycles of combined therapy. 75% of patients were undetectable in blood for minimal residual disease, 72% in the bone marrow. 86 per patients were, were assigned to either uh, placebo or ibrutinib, and you can see there were 43 patients assigned in each of those uh, categories of treatment for continued therapy. Among those patients who did not have confirmed MRD, there were 63%, uh, 63 of those patients, um, and 31 were assigned to ibrutinib, continued ibrutinib single agent, and 32 to continued combination therapy. This is the summary slide for the results, and these are the one-year disease-free survival on the right, and basically those two curves are similar and not statistically significantly different. So the bottom line and conclusion from this presentation was that patients who achieved an undetectable MRD status with treatment did just as well, if you look at the one-year disease-free survival rate, between those patients who were assigned to placebo or no continued treatment versus continued ibrutinib therapy. Um, and this supports the approach of um, treatment discontinuation and monitoring and remission for patients who achieve an undetectable MRD status, um, particularly in regard to this strategy of combined targeted therapy, ibrutinib plus venetoclax. Patients who received continued ibrutinib um, monotherapy versus I, the continued combination are shown here, both in regard to MRD uh, status in the bone marrow on the left portion and in the blood on the right. The hatched portion is improvement in response or undetectable MRD status. So you can see a higher proportion of patients converting to undetectable MRD with continued combined therapy compared to ibrutinib by itself. Now, this combination was very well tolerated. We didn't see any safety signals or any um, concerns for um, toxicity um, or need for discontinuation early because of excessive toxicity. Um, we did see the expected toxicities that we associate with um, either ibrutinib or venetoclax but the severe toxicities as shown here were um, very uh, low level um, and uh, manageable. So that's the conclusion from the Captivate study. Um, durable, deep remissions with combined therapy, 12 cycles of combined therapy, um, and uh, durable remissions uh, at discontinuation of treatment, particularly in terms of one-year disease-free survival uh, for those patients who uh, received placebo versus uh, ibrutinib monotherapy. The second um, set of data that I wanted to review was the TRANSCEND study. Um, this is a phase one trial of lysocell or CD19 CAR T-cell therapy for relapsed and refractory patients with chronic lymphocytic leukemia. It's a, actually, it's a phase one, phase two, but the data that was presented so far is phase one data. Um, there were two cohorts uh, in this um, phase one uh, set of data. One uh, which received lysocell by itself, so just the CAR T-cell therapy, and the other was with combined lysocell plus ibrutinib. There is some data that was generated by the UPenn group uh, that showed that the product that was made in patients who were on ibrutinib was more potent and worked better than when patients had their T cells collected for production when they weren't on ibrutinib. Also, these CAR T cells potentially work better, expand better when they're given in the setting of patients being on ibrutinib, and there may be less toxicity also associated um, with combined treatment versus uh, lysocell or CAR T cell therapy by itself. So this trial is a phase one trial um, intended to look at tolerability and toxicities, two dose levels tested, and two cohorts. The monotherapy cohort had previously been presented, and I presented for the, for the first time the combination um, data. The monotherapy data was updated at ASH uh, this year by Don, Tanya Siddiqui. 
Um, and in the combination cohort, there were also two dose levels evaluated. So I'm gonna go first through the uh, monotherapy uh, data that Tanya Siddiqui presented. 23 patients enrolled in this monotherapy cohort. These patients um, all were previously treated um, and some, in fact, 11 were previously treated and were resistant to BTK and venetoclax-based therapy. So this analysis is to look at outcomes, um, particularly paying attention to the double refractory patients, patients who had failed both ibrutinib um, or other BTK and venetoclax therapy. We focus on toxicity first. Um, cytokine release syndrome is a toxicity that we see that we worry about. Um, and so this is highlighted in this slide is the grade three or significant um, uh, cytokine release uh, syndrome occurred in only 9% of the 23 patients treated. Neurotoxicity um, or neurologic events also reported here grade three or higher occurred in about 22% uh, of these 23 patients. Those are lower incidents of, um, of toxicities. If you look at um, patients who had received CAR T-cell therapy with ALL um, and also um, in terms of other products used in lymphoma. So a reasonably well-tolerated treatment, about 10% with grade three or higher cytokine release, 22%, about a quarter of the patients with significant neurologic toxicity. Um, we did report responses and the responses are summarized here. So 88, 82% of the patients had, had a response, about half of them had a complete remission and those responses are um, durable in uh, many of the patients. Um, and although realize that it's 23 patients, so a relatively limited number of patients in those patients, um, particularly the ones with refractory disease, clearly responses that are durable. That's also illustrated here in terms of duration of response on the left and the progression-free survival on the right with monotherapy. I presented the data for combination therapy. There were 19 patients treated uh, in this cohort of combined uh, lysocell plus ibrutinib. There were four in the do low dose level, 15 in the higher dose level. And the patient characteristics are shown here, all previously treated, and a number of them were refractory to standard treatment. All these patients started ibrutinib when they were enrolled on the study and screened. And then the CAR T's, the T cell for production were collected while patients were on ibrutinib and the ibrutinib was continued for um, up to 90 days um, or longer after treatment with a lysocell. So in comparison to the monotherapy, this is the toxicities, 5% of the patients experienced grade three or higher cytokine release. So a bit lower, although the numbers of these patients are limited. Um, than with monotherapy, and 16% also a bit lower than with monotherapy who experienced uh, neurologic toxicity. Um, so manageable, we did see um, um, ibrutinib-related toxicities associated with uh, patients who received the ibrutinib on this cohort, those being uh, potentially um, uh, uh, side effects such as atrial fibrillation, et cetera. Um, there was no uh, safety signal in terms of those ibrutinib-related toxicities, and clearly activity and responses uh, in these 19 patients. So 63% of the patients achieved a complete remission, and over 80% of those patients were MRD negative in blood, uh, and about 80% were MRD negative in the bone marrow. So clearly activity in this heavily pretreated refractory population of patients with the combined ibrutinib plus uh, lysocell, and those uh, responses are durable responses. When we looked at expansion of the CAR T's in patients after they were treated, uh, these are those data, and, and I would draw your attention to the CMAX, which is the um, expansion of the CAR T's, the peak expansion. Um, is uh, the number that's provided here is related to a molecular test for the CAR uh, reached 128,000 in the combined cohort. That's much higher than it was in terms of the monotherapy cohort, which was 67 
uh, thousand. Um, so my impression has been that it's a well-tolerated combination of ibrutinib plus lysosel. There are potential advantages of reduced toxicity and, um, and enhanced expansion. Um, and our work continues with that clinical trial and collecting additional information and enrolling more patients, uh, particularly I'm interested in the combined therapy. So this summarizes the highlights from those two, um, uh, well, all three abstracts, the Captivate study, as well as the lysocell or CD19 CAR T cell uh, strategy, um, which provided both provided very encouraging uh, data for our patients, uh, both in the frontline setting and in the relapse setting uh, for treatments, new treatments for patients with CLL. Thank you.